for one last time. It's the NASCAR Cup Series 2024, and uh, this is it. We'll be talking about 2025 real soon. Matter of fact, we'll be talking about the 2025 season on this show, uh, which uh, could very well be the, the one of the last shows that we do exclusively on Prime Sports Network. I know we've been bouncing around a lot this year, but uh, we, there's, there's a purpose to it, and we've looked like we found a new home. So starting, matter of fact, this show is actually going to be uh, published on one of our new channels. Uh, it's a channel that we've partnered with called ProLine. So we're going to leave uh, links in the description, uh, and, uh, and then that's where you're going to go to watch our videos in the future. We might still leave some videos here to kind of guide everybody over there, but um, that's going to be all good stuff, good news, because there's a lot of content on this upcoming channel that we're going to be working with, and that's going to bring in more viewers and more traffic uh, and a lot more for us to do. So anyway... Uh, the 2024 season is officially over, CJ. And I guess NASCAR got what they deserved, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they did. Um, I don't know. I, I still think what we talked about last time, where you take the playoff tracks and you put them in a random number, number generator or whatever and just have things get mixed up, maybe it makes it a little bit more of an even playing field. But yeah, I think they're were certainly some complaints that came as a result of it. Um, you know, it's the third for Joey Logano. It's a third in a row for Team Penske. Team Penske, one, two. Joey Logano, second highest winning uh, driver of the season, second only to Kyle Larson, who had six. But uh, Logano with his victory at Phoenix had four. Uh, Logano with his victory at Phoenix had four. So I don't have too many complaints. Uh, if you complain about the format, which I also do. If you complain about the format, which I also do, along with a lot of other people, then. Yeah, maybe you've got your gripes, but nonetheless, that's the rules that we play by, and therefore, that's what we got. Yeah, somebody said on the, one of the message boards I was reading on, on I think it might have been on Eric's, uh, Eric Estep's uh, channel, because I was wanting to see how they were reacting, and someone pointed out that, correct me if I'm wrong, but Joey Logano ha has like this like really high average, finishing average. I forget what it was that he said, but it was like really high. Yeah, well, or high, depending on how you look at it, either the lowest or the highest finishing average of a champion since Ryan Blaney last year. They're, they're two, two uh, worst finishing average across the season champions. I think Blaney's was 16 point something. I know Joey Logano's was 17.1. Um, and, and, you know, we've been talking about it all season. Logano had... Um, many near misses he had a, a the speed to win it took him a while to get to the victory um once he got to the playoffs though that's how this format works it's all yeah. about winning in the playoffs and that's exactly what they did and when it came down to last sunday at phoenix the most important win Penske rose to the occasion and logano got it done it was pretty apparent early on in that race that logano was going to be the guy to beat he just he had the speed didn't make any mistakes. The team executed. He's got the best strategist on his side. Uh, so I just didn't see much of a way uh, for that to, to not fall into his lap. Not that it fell into his lap. Obviously, it took a lot of work. Uh, but even with Blaney charging, I still didn't think Blaney was going to be able to get by. Um, and and that's, that's kind of how it ended. Kind of un, uneventful after the prior two races, from my perspective, I would have wished. And, and that's the problem with Phoenix. I, I just wish. Phoenix was, sucks. Exactly. I wish they would take it away, put it in different tracks or a better track, um, like we talked about last week. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, come on. I mean, you're sitting there where, where you know, Blaney's uh, he catches Logano, and that was really the the, the 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 race was won on that final caution, and Logano uh, was in better position, got off to the lead. And had like a whatever, almost a three second lead on Blaney. And that's all it was, was Blaney got all, uh, got right up to Logano. And then because it's Phoenix, he couldn't pass him. And it's yep. just terrible. It's so boring. It's so ridiculous. Uh, after what we, like you said, after the excitement of the last couple of weeks. I mean, that's what we would have loved to have seen uh, at either one of those tracks, especially especially Homestead. Just imagine if we would have had 
you know, Logano and Blaney going up against each other in the last couple of laps on that track. So, but yeah, I could not agree anymore. Um, despite the fact, you know, all the improvements that they've made with this car to, to reduce the impact of aerodynamics, it still continues to be an aerodynamically dependent car. And at a track like Phoenix, to your point, you can, you can get to somebody but it's going to be really, really hard to get by them. And I don't know if you noticed throughout the race, but almost all of the gaps throughout the field, regardless of where you looked at, certainly the top 10, there was like at least a second, if not almost a second, if not more, between every single driver. Like nobody was close and racing side by side. It felt like it was just a matter of working through cautions, or I'm sorry, working through traffic. And once you got through into that position, it was like everybody just held status quo about a second off of the guy ahead of them. Uh, it was just, it made for a boring race. Um, again, I, I think there's got to be something thrown into the mix, whether you switch up the tracks, make the tires fall off a little bit more, uh, just get rid of Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, just, just get rid not. of Phoenix. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, come on. This is a no brainer. I can't yeah. believe we got to do this again next year. Is that like a is that done, done deal? Done deal. That's just yeah. terrible. I was just looking at it. So uh, Martinsville leads into Phoenix again. Um, the only difference, really, well, I, there are a couple differences, but uh, Homestead is being replaced with Talladega, so that'll be the the race after Las Vegas before Martinsville before you get to Phoenix. But yeah, Phoenix done deal. November are they 7th. racing twice at Homestead or only once? Just once. Just once. Why, yeah, why, 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 why race twice there? Why? why would you race twice at the best track? One of the best tracks nah, you've got. No reason. Nah. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway. <laughs> so. That's bad. Uh, I don't know if they could tweet. What? Anticlimax. It, yeah. It was, I mean. After the buildup of a couple of weeks to come to that, it was, it was just kind of deflating. A deflating way to go into the winter. All right, let's take a look at the uh, futures for next year. And, well, Logano's out of it. He can't win because it's a, the, the year it's is not, not, not. Yeah, so he's out. So that makes it, uh, that, that, that means Ryan Blaney's in good shape. So, because Logano's the only one, his teammate is the only one, because uh, they've figured out that track basically uh, at that time of year. So they've got it dialed in. So, all right, it's got to be Larson, correct? Yeah, I, we were talking about this before. I, I think it should be Blaney. Yeah, I, we were talking about this before. Uh, as when, uh, if they get the consistency, I, I think Las Vegas goes for them. They go for them every week. Why not now as well? Let me see where we had uh, where do we have our preview stuff. Predictions, there we are. Let's see, because the preseason odds... All right, now, I've got the preseason odds for the last two years. And the number was 5-1. to one. Elliot... <laughs> okay. It was, oh, by the way, last year, it was Blaney and Larson at 5-1. to one. So I got to believe that why, why wouldn't it still be Blaney and Larson if Blaney almost made it two in a row? Blaney didn't win the championship. Because Blaney. That's the only thing against him. He probably boosted a little bit last year because he came off the championship. He didn't win the race, but he got the championship. So. All right. So let's see. Larson, Blaney, Blaney, Larson. Let's see. Do, 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 do. And it, oh, so, shocker. Kyle Larson. Nailed it. <laughs> Let's see where Blaney is. It's got to be Blaney second, right? There's no way it's anybody there's else. No, there's nobody else. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> even, even the Larson. Okay. I, really? This is surprising. Blaney's the fourth choice. Now, look, it's November, so the odds I was telling you about were in February. So we've got four months to see how the odds move. And maybe by the time we do the show to preview the season, the week before the Daytona 500, these odds will change a little bit. 
But look, uh, see this. See, I, I I'm kind of bugged out because I picked Christopher Bell, and when I picked him, he was eight to one, and now he's down to five to one. Uh, so everybody's catching on now with Christopher Bell. But but here's the deal, and this is extremely important. And and look, Bell Bell's fine at Phoenix, but we I think we just proved again this track sucks. They're not making any changes apparently. So you have to think strategy of who races well at the track. That's what you have to think about. Obviously, you got to get there, but, you know, and I, I mean, I guess all four of these drivers are more than capable of winning at Phoenix. They've had moments there. So, yeah, Byron's got to win. Larson has won. Uh, Bell, yeah, he led the most laps on Sunday. Ryan Blaney, consistently very good there. Um, yeah, I, all four. Yeah, I, I, all four um, could easily win. Byron, I think. Um, did he win in the fall, or did he only win in the spring? I, I forget what what which race uh, he won, whether it was the spring race or the fall race. But um, Bell with 143 laps led on Sunday. Kyle Larson, who's won there in the past. Um, finished uh fourth on sunday led 13 laps or something like that and yeah i guess if you if you approach it that way this makes sense however as we talked about at the beginning the way that you need to get there is an entire season you've got to win a race prior to the final 10 race stretch and then you've got to figure out your way all the way through and by the way now you've got talladega as your second to last race before you get to phoenix so kyle larson terrible at, at Talladega. So if he doesn't get it done at Las Vegas, Martinsville is really his only shot. Uh, Toyota, Christopher Bell, eh, can kind of win, maybe. Uh, I think the Talladega odds maybe favor somebody like a Byron or a Blaney. Okay, so the next drivers, you've got Hamlin, Elliott, you have Reddick, uh, and I don't know where they're going to put Kyle Busch, but I think maybe there's there's eight there's four more drivers there four or five more drivers there who do who do you like fifth Raddick Hamlin not Hamlin Elliot uh, either Elliot or Reddick probably Reddick Reddick I'm gonna go ahead with Elliot <laughs> Hamlin no thank you yeah it's just not gonna happen. Yeah, it's not here. Can't happen. There's Reddick. And there's Elliot. Wow. Eleven or one. Target. Oh, yeah. Certainly of everybody we've talked about, Elliot would be the one to go with here in November. Yeah. Well, the favorites are gone now. We gotta to jump to the start. We we just started to go to the long shots. Uh no Kyle Bush yet. The Briscoe. Briscoe's up there because he's moving to Martin Truex's okay. ride for Joe Gibbs. So the question is how quickly, who Briscoe's always been a Ford driver, how quickly can he come up to speed in the Toyota? How quickly can he come up to speed in Joe Gibbs racing? If he's able to do that, we know that they've got great equipment. Perhaps he can learn from Christopher Bell. Uh, that's that's the, the play there. Okay. And there's Kyle. Ty Gibbs. Wow. Kozlowski, Chastain, Bowman. We just saw how Bowman, I mean, Bowman, he's probably, he, he's the reason why I lost. He's the reason why Blaney lost. Because if they didn't have that ridiculous, well, actually, who did he, yeah, was that Logano who got in for Bowman? Who got in for Bowman? I forget. It was, I think it was Blaney. No, no, no. It was someone else. It was, uh, who got in for Bowman? Bowman was out, wasn't it? Logano? Oh, or was it Byron? Inter no, Byron got in at the end. Who was it? No, interesting. Who got uh, the benefit of, By of Bowman being knocked out? Oh, that was Logano. I'm was sorry. Logano. Yeah. And then Bell. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot. I, I thought you were talking about, um, specifically at phoenix yeah so yeah bowman was underweight that 
put Byron through. Then at Martinsville, Bell rode the wall, had a safety violation, which put Byron through. Uh, or Logano, I'm sorry, came in, came through from Bowman. And then Byron went through to Phoenix from, yeah. from Bell. So if Bowman doesn't even go through that, Blaney's probably the champion again. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, some of these long shots aren't bad. I mean, to get these four guys here. I was going to say, Chastain looks really good at 30 as well. I would take all four of them. <clears throat> because they're all the type of drivers that we can see have one of those types of years. So sort of like, you know, almost like a Redick. I, mean, I don't mm -hmm. look at Reddick as a guy. I, you know, I think Reddick's a nice driver. I, I just don't know if I look at Reddick the way I do with, you know, Blaney and Bell and Byron and those guys. I think he's kind of a little bit next stop. But I don't think there's a big. Uh, I don't see this big divide from a guy like Reddick to these guys. For me personally, no, no definitely not. Uh, you know, Gibbs is probably. Um, too expensive there, certainly, considering he hasn't won a race yeah, yet. Yeah, that's... But Keselowski, yeah. Chastain, Bowman, Busher, like like we talked about, it's all about getting hot at the right time, scoring your wins at the right time. Keselowski's done it, Busher's done it, Bowman does it all the time, Chastain's done it. So, yeah, all four of these are, are good bargains right now. Yeah, Bob is going to be interesting. I mean... Uh... <clears throat> I'd put Wallace ahead of Gibbs at this point. Yes, I think this is uh, a little bit high, and I don't think he should be. I mean, Shane Van Gisbergen, come on, what are you serious? So he's going to get in through the road courses. Yeah. Um And again, there's, I don't see a road course in the last round before you get to Martinsville, and plus it's his rookie season, so. Um, even Sindrick looked really good towards the end of the season, and you could, yeah. and we know how talented he is, and he's with Penske. Absolutely. So I would definitely do Sindrick too. Yep. Carson Osevar, rookie of the year, at one hundred and thirty to one. <laughs> yeah, we're not looking at champions now, so uh, none of these guys are worth money here. You know, whether or not they'll have good seasons and all that, it's a different story. But winning a championship, that's a different level. So, yeah, I'd go uh, I'd go Sindrick. I'd definitely do the all four of these. Kozlowski, Chastain, Bowman, and Busher. Um, I mean, Kyle at 22, I mean, we know the talent is there. So maybe we look back at this. And go, wow, what a bargain it was to get Kyle Busch at 22 to 1. Look at a fantastic season he's having. How could we not have put money on Kyle Busch? Because it's Kyle Busch. That could easily happen. So i probably do that. You know, i I probably even feel better about taking Kyle Busch and Briscoe just because, like you said, just to expect Briscoe to go to a new team and then, boom, win a championship. I just don't think that can happen in one year. Um, and Elliott, 11 to 1. I think those are some good good odds. And as far as the, the favorites up here, I mean, you just go with who you go with. And we'll talk more about this uh, in February. Is like, when is Larson not going to be 5-1? to one? In other words, when does he drop to 3-1? to one? <laughs> uh, He drops to 3-1 to one, uh, somewhere in the first round of the 2025 playoffs after he wins a race. <laughs> and then... Uh, that's that's it, and then it starts coming back up again when he uh, when when he doesn't uh, when he underperforms because his expect the expectations on him are just too high. So yeah. anyway, so there you go. That's uh, that's something to chew on if you want to go into the futures. Of course, keeping in mind it's like betting on Wall Street. It's an investment. If you do futures, your money's tied up for a long time. So. Uh, and and, and, and and most of those odds, especially the long shot odds, are not going to change very much. So I would just wait until February. Hold on to your money. Unless you are the type of person that would rather invest your money uh, because you think you'll spend it on something worse. So 
uh, if you do that, then there you go. You've got our, you've got our, uh, our picks, uh, the investments that we would go with. Keep in mind, F1 coverage is going to continue. And uh, once again, we're going to push the ProLine YouTube channel. Um, I don't know if our, our, our overall background and all that might even change a little bit. So things will be a little bit different, but it's still going to be me and CJ. So uh, we'll also be back at some point to talk about silly season. Now, silly season's over, of course. Uh, it's, it, it is, there is, it's it, it's, it's the off season. So th there's no moves that can be made. No significant moves that can be made at this point. Right, CJ, everything is done. Uh, we have a couple of dominoes that could fall, but anything of significance is basically done. I think the big things that are going to come out are going to be a result of what happens with the lawsuit that's underway. Yes. And you can't really do much. Nothing's really going to happen at the earliest until December, January at that point. Um, the question is, with the lawsuit that's out there from uh, 23XI as well as Front Row Motorsports, while they both have teams, cars, drivers, sponsors all lined up um, and ready to go, they don't have charters. So if those charters ultimately don't go to them and they go somewhere else, uh, that would be where we would see any kind of silly season movement. But again, that's not going to happen for a while. I don't think the next uh, hearing is supposed to happen for another couple of weeks yet. Okay. And then, let me see if I can, this may even be looking better. Uh, the other thing is, before we leave, I want to make sure that, hold on a second, why isn't this working? I want to make sure that we take a look one more time at some of our final comments uh, from across the board. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, uh, let's see, where are we? Um, okay, I don't remember where this was. Charles Wainwright, 2042. This was once a great sport before it became a wannabe ball game who even watches this crap anymore. I can't remember the last time I saw anybody wear a NASCAR cap. Okay, Charles Wainwright, 2042 Hall of Fame comment. So we're, this is, we're, we're, we're officially coming, this is our first Hall of Fame comment. So this is something new that we're establishing here on, what's that? Right on the floor. Yeah, see how it's done? Uh, let's see. KLRDJ07, the discreet pit maneuver on Blaney wasn't anywhere near as cringe as the long face and the sorrowful act that Bowman put on during that interview after the race. Oh, I think we did this one already. Because I don't remember, I don't, I don't recall w w which one that was. I think we had talked about this one. Yeah, that one was. Yeah. So anyway, KLRD. DJ seven or what? Uh, just let us know. Remind us. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, yeah, some of these were actually right after the hurricane. Now let me get a little bit more updated. Let's see. Uh, keep going. Oh, here we go. Uh, Lana, gotta. We can't. We we can't wrap up without a, a, a final message from Lana and Wayne. Uh, so, Lana, till next season, my friends, I finished second in work league out of 25. Thanks for the insights this year. I'm going to try and check out F1. So. Yeah, three races left. Yeah. And we'll be. I'm into it. <laughs> and we'll be back to talk about F1 next week. Uh, and then Wayne. Just wanted to thank you for a great year. I did win the yearly poll. Thanks to you boys. Have a great time off and see you next year. So, first and second. Excellent. Wayne and Lana. Got to get Lana back to first. Yes. Just like Ryan Blaney. <laughs> yes. All right. So, again, F1. We'll be back over the next three weeks. And then that's it for F1, right? Three straight weeks and then it's over? Three straight weeks. Las Vegas is up first. Then we got uh, Abu Dhabi 
I'm sorry, uh, Qatar, and then Abu Dhabi finishes out the season around mid-December. And since we already gave everybody insight a couple of months ago on how to make money, our our handicapping, our our play of the year, uh, we told you to go with uh, uh, Max when we told you, so we're not going to beat that horse anymore this year, but I will remind everybody as often as possible so, so you can just understand what great handicappers we are. Uh, but fact <laughs> is, at this point in time, there really isn't anything that you can do anymore in F1, right? I mean, it's now it's just going to be the next three weeks, try to see if you can make some money on one of the races. That's about it. Yeah, the futures uh, first up in... I mean, we've been saying for months he had it wrapped up. Whether you believed it or not was the question. Everybody else followed us afterward. Four. The favorite odds across the top four. difficult to make money at this point uh but that said if there is an opportunity to make money uh, i think it's going to come at qatar because qatar is a slightly different track it's got a little bit more prevalence of high speed corners where ferrari doesn't perform very well so depending on how the odds following las vegas play out uh qatar may end up being an opportunity for us but we'll see what happens at las vegas first so in other words, Las Vegas may fake some people out and expect something different than what Qatar is likely to produce. But we'll see if that plays out. All right. So join us if you would like. Uh, we'll be around talking F1. Again, it's ProLine. Uh, we'll have a link in the description so you can check it out. We will be talking about the silly season that we really did not touch up on because we, had so, we didn't have enough time every week. I mean, we had an hour... Uh, or more to talk about sometimes NASCAR and F1. But now that the season's over, we can go into all of it and update everybody. And we're going to be doing that shortly. So probably be scheduling that at some point uh, before the end of the year. And then it'll sit in the library and it'll be available to anybody that wants to check it out before we're back uh, for the preseason preview of the 2025 NASCAR season. And of course, the Daytona 500 for 2025. So that'll wrap it up. CJ, uh, appreciate once again. Been a fun season as always. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, looking forward to our new venture over at ProLine. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get some new traffic. We're going to get uh, we're going to get an opportunity to you know do even better things. So I'm looking forward to it. So. Uh, for CJ Radoon, don't forget to check out CJ's uh, reports over at uh, rotowire.com. Uh, for now on, next three weeks, it'll be F1. And we'll remind everybody about that when we talk F1 on next week's show. So again, for all our NASCAR fans, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate your dedication. And uh, we look forward to seeing you back again. Or I hope, and of course, you'll see us back again in 2025. And uh, it's only going to keep be uh, getting better from here. So thanks for... Uh, Hanging in with us and uh, look forward to seeing you again real soon.